When it comes to Linux security, there's people that we want to be able to access our server, such as our customers, and then there's some people out there that we would rather not be able to access our server. Now, a firewall is one tool that we can use to get a little bit more control over who or what is able to access our Linodes. And simply having a firewall isn't enough by itself. We need to make sure that it's properly configured. So in this video, what I'm going to do is show you guys how to use UFW, which is a very simple way to get started with setting up a firewall on your Linode. So let's go ahead and set up UFW and see some examples of how to configure it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now for this particular tutorial, I've already created a Linode for the task. Right here I have my cleverly named Linode UFW tutorial. It's running Ubuntu 2004 as you can see right here. And we have the IP address, so I'll grab that. And we can go ahead and get started. So I'll get connected via SSH. I'll just paste in the IP. And there we go. Now, notice on my end here that it says that there are zero updates available at the moment. That's really important because you definitely want to make sure that you have everything up to date. So to install all of the updates, you would first run apt update. You would need to use sudo if you are not using root like I am. That'll make sure that all of the package indexes are up to date. And then you would just run apt dist upgrade to install all of the available updates. I don't have anything available to be updated at the moment. So just make sure that on your end, your Linode is fully updated. Now to get started with UFW, You'll need to install the package. So on Ubuntu, you'll do that by running apt install UFW. If the distribution on your Linode is something other than Ubuntu, then consult the matching documentation for this video for alternatives or consult the documentation for your distribution for how to install packages on that distro. But anyway, I'll press enter here to get that installed for Ubuntu. And in my case, it was actually already installed, as you can see with the verbiage right here. You can check the status of UFW by running systemctl status UFW. And we see that it is actually running. Now just because UFW is running, that doesn't mean that it's actually doing anything for us. The most important thing to keep in mind when it comes to a firewall is just simply having it installed is never enough. It needs to be configured. So let's go ahead and configure it then. Now, first of all, what we are going to do is set the default rules for the UFW firewall. So for that, we will run UFW default allow and then outgoing. And then we can see from the verbiage that the default outgoing policy has been changed to allow. And the reason why you might want to do this is because if the Linode is trying to reach something on the Internet, basically it's outgoing from the Linode to the Internet then you'll want it to be able to reach whatever it's trying to reach. Next, what we're going to do is set the default policy for incoming. And for that, we will run UFW default deny, in this case, incoming, and then press enter. Now, we have to be very careful here because we can actually lock ourselves out of the Linode if we configure the firewall improperly. We can still use the Lish console in the Linode dashboard at least on Linode's end, to get back into the server should we need to do so. But just keep in mind, you want to take your time here. Don't rush this. We want to make sure that we do it right. But right now we have configured the default outgoing as well as incoming policy here. So we should be good to go there. But the thing is, UFW isn't actually enabled yet. We'll be enabling that shortly. So what I'm going to do is go back up here to the dashboard. I'll grab the IP and then in a new tab, I'll paste that IP in and then press enter. And we can see that we have the Apache 2 default web page right here. And that's because I actually have Apache running on the example server already. I've installed Apache off camera. And what I'm going to do is use this as an example of UFW working. So back here in the terminal, what I'm going to do is type UFW allow SSH. We need SSH to be able to connect to the Linode in order to manage it. 
So it's a good idea to have that enabled, so I'll press Enter. And that's also important because when I enable UFW, if I don't have SSH enabled, then I'll actually be dropped from the Linode and I won't be able to access it unless I go to the Lish console, for example. But you definitely don't want to get locked out, so make sure you at least enable SSH, which I've done here. Now, word to the wise. When I enable SSH right here, UFW knows that the port for SSH is 22. Now, I could have typed UFW allow 22. It'd be essentially the same thing. But it knows that SSH is port 22, which is why I was able to do that. If you have SSH on a different port, then you'll want to make sure that you configure the proper port for SSH, whatever that happens to be. So what I'm going to do now is type UFW status. And we can see that it is inactive. And that's why I was able to create all of these rules. And it hasn't really done anything. It hasn't dropped me or anything like that. We can enable it by running UFW enable and then enter. And it's even warning you right here that this could disrupt existing SSH connections, like I've already mentioned. So we're prepared for that because we did enable SSH. So I'll type Y for yes and then enter. And now UFW is active and it shows us that port 22 for SSH is allowed. Now if I go up here to the browser and if you remember, I brought up the example Apache website. As you see right here, if I refresh the page, nothing's going to happen. Why? Well, because I've enabled SSH, but I didn't enable access to port 84 Apache. So this connection, this request right here, it's never going to succeed. It's going to time out. And fixing that is very easy. I could just type UFW, allow, and then 80. That's the port for HTTP. In fact, I can actually type HTTP slash TCP to specifically enable TCP over port 80, which is known as HTTP, and that would work as well. But it doesn't matter if you use HTTP slash TCP or just simply type 80 for port 80. But anyway, we can see that it actually did finish because I enabled it in time before it timed out. And I can also refresh the page. I am able to access this web page now since I've enabled it with the UFW command. So for the next example, we're going to get a little bit more advanced. And for this example, we will need to know our public IP address. So you can go to a website such as ICANHASIP.com and that will give you your actual public IP for your internet connection. We're going to need this. And then back here in the terminal, what we can do is actually enable SSH specifically for our IP address because right now every IP address is allowed to attempt to make a connection via SSH to our server. You definitely want to lock down SSH if you can. Now I'm sure a lot of you out there have an internet connection that has an IP via DHCP that can change and if your IP changes it could lock you out. Just keep that in mind. Now on my end it's a good idea to lock down SSH to your public IP if you can, because then only you are allowed to make a connection via SSH. And the syntax for setting this up is UFW, allow, from, and then you paste in the IP address from the previous step, and then to any port 22, and proto, short for protocol, will be TCP. So what we're doing right here is we are configuring UFW to allow traffic to port 22 from only my public IP address. As soon as I restrict SSH to this IP, then anyone else that might be trying to get into the server will immediately be unable to do so. At least if they're trying to do so via SSH. Anyway, I'll press enter. And the rule has been added. So if I run UFW status, you can actually see the entry right here. It's allowing access to port 22 from this IP address. Now, there's a problem here, though, because right above it, I'm allowing access to 22 from anywhere. So the rule that we've just added is essentially useless. It's not really doing us much good here. So what we can do is run a different command, UFW status, and then numbered, and press Enter. And we get pretty much the same output as before, but we have a number next to each entry. So what I could do is run UFW delete 
because I want to delete a rule and I want to delete the first one. And it's just giving me a confirmation. And now that's deleted. So if I run UFW status numbered again, you can see that initial one is gone and number one now refers to a different entry. And what I want to do is run UFW delete and then I'll delete number three and then press enter. And then again, we have a final look at our firewall rules right here. We are allowing access to port 80 from anywhere, which is actually a very normal thing to do when it comes to a web server because the whole point of a web server is, well, to serve web pages. And it's best able to do that if it's publicly available because in this case, we are allowing it from anywhere, so that's good. But we don't really want access to port 22 allowed from everywhere. We should only have access to port 22 from our internet connection, which will basically make sure that it's a bit harder for people to break into our server. Now, there are other examples on the documentation page that matches this video if you want to see even more examples of UFW. But what I've shown you right here should go pretty far. If you are hosting a particular service on your Linode that runs on a particular port, then you just make an intelligent decision on whether or not that port should be publicly available. You could actually just want to have an application running on your Linode that is only accessible by you and nobody else. So for example, we have port 80 right here. The web server is serving web pages to everybody. So if you wanted more of an internet style here where you are the only one that can access that website, then you could actually achieve that via UFW. And then we've restricted 22 as well for SSH. So you can configure UFW to open whatever ports you want. The rule of thumb to follow is if there's no reason for it to be publicly accessible, then don't allow it to be publicly accessible. If it does need to be publicly accessible, does it need to be accessible by everyone or just certain people? So you basically just walk through that logic and make sure that your firewall is configured to allow the fewest people to access it as possible. So there you go. Those are some examples of utilizing UFW, which is a very easy way of getting started with setting up a Linux firewall. I hope it was helpful. As always, you can check out the documentation page that matches this video for even more examples. And then make sure you click that like button as well as that subscribe button if you haven't already done so so you'll get alerts for any new content that is coming and we have some awesome things coming so make sure you do that and as always thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day